It so to be. me, that's that made sense. Which is what I would respond. Yes, yeah. I, that's and that makes sense. But I just I often just feel like I fail open on this because I don't know. I don't, you know. Well, the, and the reason why I look at that is I say, okay, so we had budgeted twenty six thousand five hundred dollars. We spent twenty thousand five hundred dollars, which means we have five thousand three hundred dollars left. If all the contracts are written, is that now fifty three hundred dollars that can go to something else? Well, that's or it could be, or it could be a contract that gets paid later in the year. Right. And we just have. And to, and yeah. that's the level of kind of we're just trying to understand mm -hmm. what we have to be focused on, so we don't spend a whole lot of time here every week saying, but over here this line. It just I'm just trying to make it cleaner so that we don't have to spend as much time talking about things that we don't have to care about, but we, but we focus on the things that we should care about. Mr. Chair, are you suggesting maybe instead of getting this times six times all these pieces of paper that she creates a new report of just um, watch items, watch and warning, like the, like the winter storms we have, watches and warnings, rather than all this that, you know, I bet 95% of it is on target and, um, and, and, and your chief. And I'm okay. I'm okay with how you. Uh, same expression I've used before. How you tell your story. If it's a summary mm -hmm. slide, and you email electronically all the raw data, so somebody can look at it if they want it. I assume that if you send just a summary slide, then somebody's going to say, "Well, this one's at 87 percent," and you're just talking about things over. There's always going to be people asking those questions, right? Because. I'm just yes. wondering if you want this or not. I would. I well, I wouldn't want to do away with it. Okay. Because sometimes right. we talk about other items, and I like to go back in and say, well, wait a minute, how far are we into this budget this year? It might not be in trouble, but it might, something else, I might need it for something else. Did this quarterly uh, summary sheet um, uh, monthly. Uh, again, I, maybe you need this monthly, maybe just to compare and watch the trends. That's cool. So I'm just, I, I, I know it's I would be I would be happy with a summary sheet every meeting, and if we had a question, you would take the action item to email the raw data, or the whole packet. I would be happy with that, but that's me, right? Do you want to see this every month? I, I like to have access to it, and if I want to. So maybe, some. so you're getting two expense reports every month. Um, one of them is the one that you're talking about, and then the second one is a report that removes all the encumbrances so that you just yeah. see what, you know, what, you know, the amount of the budget, what's expended, and what's left. So. Um, I'm not sure which report you feel you like better. Maybe just get one of the reports instead of both of them. I, the one without encumbrances is, is not as useful to me mm -hmm. as the one with because it gives you more data, right? right. Okay. So I, my thinking, I mean, comments from the board certainly, but I'm thinking that this one gives us the same data as the expenditure sheet, less encumbrances, and if we didn't have this... I think that would be a gain. So I would go with add a summary. After a couple of months of reading the summary, if it tells us everything we need, then we'll entertain not sending the backup yeah, material. Because I, I have included in my report um, items that, you know, are a concern at the meetings, but you would just prefer to have something like in a summary report monthly now? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying I still want to see this, but right. personally I could do away with this. Okay, but that's just me. But there's other people here. But in addition to that, you want me to go ha have a list of accounts that maybe we should be concerned about? Yes, that's me. Or some way to identify them. Um, asterisks on the, co right. the column yeah. that mm -hmm. you handwrite mm -hmm. in and before you make the copies, right. or, or a circle. Since, or, or since or a highlighter won't show up in the copy in the copy machine. So we're not going to pay for color copies. We're not going to pay for color copies. I'm sensitive to that. Or, or yeah, like so I'm I'm working on something. Yeah. Okay. Or work on something. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm probably okay so with whatever the answer is. I'm just okay. asking if you could somehow or another highlight this so we could get through this a little quicker. And if it's a if it's crayons, that's fine. If it's a summary report, that's okay too. Okay. I don't want to spend you know hours and hours creating some mm -hmm. godforsaken right, yeah. thesis about you know budgets every month. Mm -hmm. So. So one thing I will yes, say I is, um, yes, I told that three times now. I'm sure you're all interested in our storm overtime budget, and so um, after this week's payroll, we will be at 81% expended of what we budgeted in storm overtime, and there's um, 
just under thirteen thousand. Just yeah, just under thirteen thousand left in in that account, which is probably you know one one storm. Um, all the so our plan B is to um, we can use the uh, town the uh, town aid road grant funds that we receive. Um, that that amount is is um, included in the public works um, budget. It's permissible to use. Um, those funds for snow removal. So that's our, our plan B so that we can um, stay within budget. Of course, we would prefer not to do that, but um, as I said, that is our plan B. And then we'd have to know what work wasn't going to be done because that budget was used for snow and ice. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we get closer to the end of the year, we could always replenish County Road with contingency money should there be money left over contingency. But I think we, or at least in this spring. So just, I mean, last week, this, the um, the crews had to go out, and that was ten thousand four hundred and seventy-four dollars. And when they went out um, uh, again Tuesday night, well, no, that's actually going to be, be next week's payroll, but it was from two weeks ago. And then um, last week it was eleven thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars. <coughs> You know, Storms are coming. It's the kind of thing. That, yeah. I would love to be able to control the weather, but I can't. <laughs> so. Two-inch storms yeah. on Saturday night, and that mm -hmm. is a very expensive. And that's what did us. That's mm -hmm. what was in our favor last year. Is all the storms were hitting during the week. During so if we could week, schedule yeah. these storms during the week, that'd be helpful. If you could work on that, please. Any other questions for our financial director? Yes. So that brought us full circle to do you have any concerns? Okay, we didn't answer we that didn't question. We didn't answer that question. The one thing that, you know, when I went through the budget, um, the, the one thing that stood out is really um, the, the storm accounts, and that's because of how the volume that we're getting so quickly and so early in, into the season. Um, the other um, suspects, the um, uh, overtime and the part-time firefighters for the um, – the fire the fire companies right now they're running you know good so you know but they're you know right at that um, you know 50 percent level maybe you know a little bit over in one of them and then um, today um, the, the actually the chief came to me and um, we uh, posted um, something to the regular overtime that should have been posted to the um, uh, foot patrol account so that'll kind of get the uh, police overtime uh, tracking right on target at this point in time. But the net so effect is going to be no different. It's just going to be moved out of one bucket to another bucket. Right, but yeah. it, you know, it, it has the accounts at the level where they should be, and it's right. because something was, um, you know, it was done on the uh, timesheet incorrect. So, you know, garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. So yeah. um, we'll, you know, we'll take care of that. Yes. Insurance claims? For... How are they running? Oh, health insurance. Yes, yeah. um, they're. You know, we're we're hitting. Um, you know, at the projected monthly, a little a little bit over. Um, and you know, we're. You know, I have to watch the cash flow in that in that account. Nothing nothing has um, has changed there. Okay. So. Thank you. Anyway. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Next agenda item, new business. Special appropriation, 500,000 steep grant for Cincy Park. Great, Mr. Chair, members of the Board Cindy of Finance. Park. We are, um, we are yes. looking forward to uh, making this presentation to you. We've, we've talked about these projects for oh, years. Thanks. Years. Thank you. They've been on our agendas on, in various forms. I'll let Bill Thank pass you. those out. You know that uh, first, first, and first up tonight, we'll be talking about the five hundred thousand dollars steep grant. Um, uh, a real easy uh, decision when we apply for money from the state, and they say, "Sure, um, we have to." Even though it's just a grant, and sure, we have to go through an appropriations. So tonight, your your vote is simply to accept the money. Uh, this, these plans have already been um, approved by the state of Connecticut. Of course, if we don't build these things, it goes back to the state of Connecticut. Um, in, the, um, in the grant that we applied for, uh, we applied to um, uh, put bathrooms at Cheney Park. And, of course, we've gone through that already with this board, talking about how we can't build buildings now down there uh, under 
the new uh, FEMA regulations, but we'll be pulling in the trailer. The trailer has already been approved um, uh, through town meeting, so that's already ready to go. But we need to, of course, build the platforms and put the pipes in to hook it all up. And, and that's still going to be a major operation and, and, and take some of this money, um, uh, most of this money, to do that. There'll be, there will be money in, as part of this um, uh, dedicated to the dinghy docks. Um, it's been pointed out, dinghy has an H in it. So when I was <laughs> typing it, I was calling it dingy docks uh, on Facebook. Uh, dinghy docks, uh, obviously, are for we're trying to encourage trans transient marine tourism. Instead of our boaters going over to Greenport or Watchill, wherever they go, have people from there come here. We have a beautiful little downtown. We have inns, and we have uh, a great little mar uh, couple of marinas. And there's places out there to dock your boat. There's also um, a, a, or moor your boat or anchor your boat in the in the in the uh, bay, or there are places in the river. And then encourage people to bring their dinghy docks over for the day. This would be all controlled by Parks and Rec, and there'll be rules set up, and the harbor master will be watchful that those docks don't get abused and, and uh, that, that they are used properly. And that's all been part of the plan. And part of that plan also includes a kayak launch system. Kayaks are hard enough to get into, I've been told. Um, but this is also designed for uh, those with disabilities and a handicap, especially wheelchair, that they could transfer into a kayak or rowboat, and then they would be launched into the river. This was brought up by a Girl Scout troop a couple years ago to our, our yeah, right, to our Board of Selectmen and uh, into the Parks and Rec, and we thought it was a great addition to the plans. Lastly, because we are having to fund the trailer uh, through another means, there might be some money left over. And if the money's left over, we'd like to use it at the 224 Main Street site, um, it's, uh, which is the mobile station, the Main Street Park. It is state money. We'd love to use state money at this park and not use uh, East Lime taxpayer money whenever possible. We're going to use all the grant money up first, including some fundraising. You'll hear about those plans on the next item that will be coming up. Um, uh, the actual will be presenting the plans for the uh, Main Street Park in great detail. We've done a lot of work on that. So tonight, this vote is very simply to accept $500,000 from the state's steep grant. One of the last grants we expect to receive for a very long time. Now, uh, Mr. Mr. Shear is. Uh, no stranger to this board. Mr. Shear can give you some detail about where the, the, the bathrooms are going to be and where the dinghy docks are going to be. Mr. Shear, you're, you're still here, right? Yes. Good evening. Um, we've talked about this in detail before. The uh, water and sewer lines are coming from Niantic Transmissions, approximately 2,400 feet down to Cheney Park. This right here is the Blackhawk building. Water, the water and sewer lines come through the parking lot. These ones are already in place. And this is the location of our new bathroom right here. Let me flip that over. Can you help? No, I'm good. Okay. This, basically, this is the, so you can, I don't remember if I showed you this last time or not. This is to show you where we are, because the next plan is going to be very difficult to understand where you are. This so is going underneath the boardwalk right here. So that's where the trail is going? Is that off yellow spot? Yep. Yes. Oh, right, here, right behind the Blackhawk building. Okay, the other day we talked about it coming like almost under the bridge. Right. Yeah. Up where the current port of okay. are. We were way off. Yeah. We thought it was in that grass underneath the bridge. Why is that bounded okay. in red? Is that a property line? That's the property line right there. For us? For us. And who owns? Amtrak owns this. DOT owns this. Okay. So, now that you know where you are. Do you, do you not know who you are now? No, I do, but I, we were trying to get a camera on that. That's oh, okay. okay. This is the path going under the, under the, to the boardwalk right here. This is the Blackhawk building. So same orientation, just a much more blown up version of it. So as you can see, we, uh, we have an, an, a, the first estimate here is to get the utilities down to the site. It's a very long and complicated process, 2,400 feet of cutting a state road, having police protection. We don't really know what we're going to get in, into in the road. Uh, there could be rocks, there could be concrete. We're not exactly sure what's going on there. That's why there's a contingency involved. 
So that total cost estimate comes to 333500 just to get the water and sewer lines to this, to this place. Now, as we mentioned before, we, we've already funded the trailer, but the permanent, permanent structures in here can be used, can be funded by the steep grant. We have a platform, a raised platform to, to go into the uh, trailer, handicap accessible ramps, and over here we have a shower and a drinking fountain. And to make it, I, I know I talked about the flood zones, to make it even more interesting, we have to have a three foot by three foot platform this high off the ground with stairs to it so that CLMP can get to their meter, which has to be up here. So just to make it more interesting. So the, the, the cost for, the other thing is we have a grinder pump that's gonna go underground here. Mm -hmm. And because it's a flood zone, we have to cover the whole thing with concrete to weight it down because an empty void will actually tend to pop out of the ground when floods happen. So we don't exactly know what we're gonna hit underground there, so we have a contingency here also. So a grinder pump, if you don't know what that is, is what takes the waste and moves it uphill. Am I yes, right? yes, you're correct. I'm learning. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, how does that go up? Because it is up downhill, right? So you gotta bring it back uphill. That's what we, we need to put a, a pump in the ground to take that waste, mm -hmm. which will be permanent, uh, semi-permanent hookups will be hooking it into the so there'll be water flowing and waste flowing out uh these trailers no no pumping no porta potties no trucks coming to pump things out this would be uh, honest to goodness trailer uh, with with running water so the grinder pump is uh, is also kind of complicated and part of the process yeah it's a so that's permanent it's that's a permanent grinder yeah. pump a duplex grinder pump if one pump fails the other one kicks in there's an alarm um it's just like it will be just as sophisticated as our town, um, the sewer pumps. So I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be go to dispatch if there's a problem. There'll probably just be an alarm with a telephone number. Um, so this will be a very sophisticated site. It'll look just like a building. The, the trailer hitch comes off, or the, yeah, the trailer hitch comes off. I'll put a little skirt around it. So it's anodized aluminum exterior. It'll look a little bit like an Airstream, but it'll be very attractive. So the cost with contingency for this is 73600 If you flip over to the... So that's not grant money, or that is grant no, this money? Is all, all this, all is, this is coming out of that steep grant from the state. And if you flip over, you can actually see the backside of that sheet and the, the, uh, the dock, dock page I have right there. Kind of um, parallel to where the gate, where the uh, gatehouse is at the end of where the wood, where, they, the, where, the, the, where the, the guards boardwalk stops yeah. right, yes. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, like Mark mentioned, we, we're looking for some economic tourism. We'd like to get some dinghies in here, um, and also some small boats. The Parks and Rec Commission would have jurisdiction of what size boats, how long they can stay, the whole nine yards, and also a Girl Scout had proposed a uh, handicap accessible kayak slash canoe launch because as it's not not the easiest easiest thing in the world to launch a kayak from anywhere uh, if you've ever been in a kayak they're not the easiest thing to get into so this would be perfect for um, not only regular people but handicapped people I just feel validated because I launched my cat my kayak from that little floating dock one day and I felt like a total klutz so I'm glad I'm not just me no, no. <laughs> it's part of the whole experience <laughs> pretty sure kayak is Latin for falling in the water I, you're gonna get wet <laughs> yes, it's, it's Indian it's for Swedish for you're gonna get wet <laughs> so we would be advertising to boaters coming through that and uh, we have to buy these dinghies, I presume, right? No. no. We assume they have them. They have them on yeah. the back of their boats. Um, oh, um, right. okay. Yeah, um, the larger ones. And this is only about 20 or 25 percent of the dinghy docks that were approved for down there. We're starting small. Um, to have it catch on, but we also need to dredge that river, and there's some other things, infrastructure that needs to happen before we become a, a you know, legitimate place to come and, and, and moor your boat, because mm -hmm. there's, there's a very little area that you could do that, but we're going to we're gonna do it, and it is needed down there. There is a demand for it. People are, uh, are asking for it and, mm -hmm. and looking for it. People moor their sailboats out in the bay, and then you see them try to pull their little zodiac up on the beach, and they're looking around like, I probably shouldn't be here. <laughs> so this would give them a definite destination to go to so they could get into town. Cool. So um, 
we put an estimate together for that, and the estimate for that is 92,000, bringing the entire estimated project with these three things to uh, basically $500,000, which is the grant amount. It's convenient. Well, we spend every dime we can it's really when it's handed to us because we are required to give it back. Otherwise, um, obviously, we spend it as frugally as we possibly can whenever <laughs> we're doing anything. So, my question for Anna is: the steep grants have their own purchasing procedure. State have a policy. They for actually that. do. So, ours is actually more stringent. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to get into that whole competitive bid questions right. and all that about that because it's being purchased by state procedure, not our town procedure. Correct. Okay. Any questions? John? Please. So we're going to pull this unit out what month? It's not in there year-round. Yes, restaurant. this will stay year-round. Mm -hmm. No, the no. oh, oh, the, tra the trailer, right? The trailer. Sorry, yeah. I thought you were talking about the docks. Not winterized. Oh, I'm sorry, I was unclear. The trailer will not be winterized. It will be. It will run the same schedule as the other bathrooms at, at McCook's. And, but they're open now. Um, bathrooms, no. I don't believe, are open in the winter. I, no. I know we we. Well, drain I know them. I was I was in one last week. You use the facilities. Yes, sir. Which one? A hole in the wall. Mr. Mr. Putnam is at the other meeting. He'll be coming. Uh, we'll ask him. Well, I, I, I didn't to, I realize that they're open. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. They're not. I, I don't think they're I mean, heated. I don't think they're supposed to be open. Right. Well, that's what I'm asking because the last meeting he said end of November and beginning of April. Yeah. That's fine. Well, yeah. Do with that information whatever you like. All right. We'll, so, we'll so the end of November you're going to pull it out of there. Correct. Take it, put it inside, clean it up, winterize it. And store it for the okay. winter. Okay, and then dur during the season, if you will, it'll be locked at some point in the evening. It will maintain the same schedule as McCook's and Hole in the Wall. Okay. You right. know, locked at night. Dust to dawn, dawn to dust, mm -hmm. dusk. Okay, thanks. Question? No, I actually, I, I heard Bill's presentation at the Board of Selectmen meeting, and thanks very much for all your work and detail and. Um, Thank you. A number of questions were asked at that meeting, but you've since answered them very well. So thank, thank you very you. much. Do, do we charge to park in this parking lot? Yeah, it's part of the beach pass system during the season. Uh, you know, that's a funky situation because we also have the town docks where, you know, Blackhawk customers can park for free. We support that business down there, right. and that's a town-owned dock, and they pay a, pay us a very small uh rent to be there um uh, but so there's that and so they, they might be taking up 15 to 20 cars in a given run uh, right. but yes otherwise it's a part of the beach pass system mm -hmm. yeah true so the boardwalk is free as well we try to encourage those people to park along the the hill going up mm -hmm. since they're walking anyway it's another 35 steps um, but yeah it's, it's always free for boardwalk users because we use federal money to build the boardwalk so can't charge for parking any other questions we're good we're good good in that case I'd like to entertain a motion I move to approve a special appropriation of 500,000 steep grant for Cheney Park in fund of 57 capital projects that includes the installation of seasonal water and sewer utilities from Nyanic River transmissions, the construction of infrastructure necessary to serve a portable restroom trailer. If funding permits the construction and installation of some or all of a transient dock including an easy kayak canoe launch in Cheney Park and a portion of the construction cost for a public park at 224 Main Street. This will require a town meeting. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. You got there first. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion about the motion before us before we go to a vote? No. Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved 5 0. Thank you. Next on the agenda is reallocation of $70,227 steep grant for 224 Main Streets. Um, so members of the 
Board of Finance, um, this is the, the, the moment we, that's been building, we've been building up to. Um, we've been talking about this for quite a long time. 2010, 2010 in August, I believe, we went, or maybe it was April, we went to a town referendum to say, do we want to buy this third of an acre and, 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 and to make it town control owned, knock down the building, clean it up, um, and, um, and overwhelmingly, by 73%, uh, voters came out and supported that. Since then, we've, um, we've we, um, brought together a task force made up of some members here tonight. So <clears throat> Niantic Main Street is here represented tonight, members of the Parks and Rec Commission, the East Line Public Trust, the Rotary Club, Me, Board of Selectmen, um, and we also had a landscape architect donate his time for this public space, which really legitimized this task force. They met over six months, over the course of six months and at least six meetings, um, to come up with this plan. We talked about colors of bricks, and we talked about stone wall, and we talked about what the sign should say, and we talked about um, uh, how many trees, style of trees, what everything should look like. And this is what we came up with. And it was a group effort represented by many members of the community. And um, what we're doing tonight is, is trying to fund the, clean, the, the development of this park. It's, um, it's a showpiece in our town. It is the number one spot on our main street that um, uh, for visibility. It was part of a study 15 years ago that, that said, what do we do? To, don't forget, 10 years ago, we had boarded up buildings down here and nobody walking the streets, just 10 years ago. And, and we brought this, this, this downtown back with these steep grants that rebuilt sidewalks and lampposts and in park benches and, and um, took down trees that were tearing up sidewalks and put in a more appropriate trees. Um, one of the steep grants has some money left over. I'm sure it was not the one <laughs> that we're thinking of. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have $70,000, $70,227 left over in a steep grant. We asked the state permission uh, if we could extend the, the money left over instead of giving it back to, to appropriate to this park. And because it's connected to Main Street and it's part of Main Street and we're incorporating Main Street into the park, they approved that. So again, what we're doing tonight is simply accepting grant money from the state to be used at this park, $70,000. Bill is going to go over the architecture of this, the, the, the components of this park. Um, and what we've come up with. So, Bill, um, take it away, I guess. All right, I'll start with this one. This is the overview of the, uh, the property. This is a very long and narrow property. It's 80 foot long, 80 foot wide here, 425 feet long that way. And what we've decided to do is put a raised terrace in the middle. I'm just going to show you an overview here, and then I'm going to switch to a blow-up so you can get a little bit more detail. Uh, but everywhere besides the terrace will be inter, uh, there'll, there'll be trees, grass. Let me go to the blow-up. Actually, before I go to the blow-up, as you come down Pennsylvania Avenue right here, you will see a... 